I am Queen Amber Bazmira. I'm a student at Uganda Christian University, currently in my third year of law school, but I'm an entrepreneur as well. Yeah, so I'll moderate this, but I'll learn from it. I'm very happy to be part of this. I know you're very, very happy to be part of this as well. So you, I think it is, yeah, you can actually read from the chat session about the Bakash Media Foundation. Yeah, this is going to take about an hour and a half, depending on how interesting it will be. But trust me, it will be interesting. I'm very sure our panelists have prepared, we've chatted, and I'm very sure you prepared enough. You're going to learn from this as young ladies. I know are the, the males that have joined, so thank you so much. We are really humbled. The topic about women entrepreneurs. So I'll. Yeah, this is the agenda that we shall follow. We'll have, okay, the login has been made and I think you guys, I can see the number is increasing. Uh, we are having this as well on Facebook and it is going on well. Um, following the agenda, I have done the introduction. We shall have three panelists. We shall have Jacqueline and Linda. We shall have Barbara Kaseken. We shall also have Masena Kareche that is about to join. And I'm very, very certain I have seen you physically on sessions on Zoom, and I'm very sure we're going to learn from this. We prepared enough. And for now, I think I'm going to request the foundation and team leader Bakash Media Foundation, who is Isaac Bakashawa, to say your remarks. Then we shall proceed to the operations lead team, uh, who is Bruno, and we shall follow the agenda as you've seen on the screen. Thank you. Isaac Bakashawa, you can now say something to us. All right, thanks, Mela. Merab, I think you can hear me. I can you? hear you well. All right, um, I will come everyone here. Um, thank you for keeping time. My name is Isaac Wakashava. I'm the team lead and the founder of Bakash Media Foundation. Um, this is our launch of the second season of our career essential series. Uh, we had this one month back, the first season, so it ended now, and this is the launch of the second season. We'd like to have you all here, and our panelists, thank you so much for uh, checking in. Uh, you know, I disturbed you with a lot of calls, a lot of emails here and there, but I'm grateful that you turned up. Together with my team, we usher you into the launch of this second season. Uh, that is going to run from, from the, with the effect from today till December every week. We're going to be here every Thursday. Bakash Media Foundation is a nonprofit devoted uh, devoted to spreading information, uh, usually in form of short and powerful talks, three hours or less. And we've done this for the last two years. Uh, we started as a group at. Makere University, that was 2009. That's when we held our first session. So our main, our main niche is spreading this career information. And we do this um, during sessions and we have programs that we are going to share with you. So we've held 15 sessions and we've engaged over 5,000 youth that have interacted with us, that have shared with us this idea and worked along with us. So we have five projects. Uh, we have the Career Essential Series that are happening now. We have the Career Breakfasts that are scaled to, uh, to certain sectors. Let me say journalism, law. We also have Career Boot Camps that we are launching soon. Uh, we have a Career Magazine that is going to be out soon. We also have we also have uh, the general Career Clinics that are going to run that where we engage personalities on a one-on-one -on -one basis um yes so we've held uh, the last season we held over four powerful career essential series and i think you can see on board uh, the first one and the second one 
the third and the fourth. So these were held each week and we engaged more than 500 youth that were turning up for these sessions and the feedback was so overwhelming. And we tackled four sectors uh, during that session where we had, we were tackling the creative industry, we had the legal, the legal fraternity also, we, we tackled it. Yeah, and the others you can see. So Bakash Media Foundation is here to serve you all, mostly especially youth. That's why we are hosting the, the panelists we have today are on youth, I believe. And we're going to have a great session. Without wasting time, I think Clemmy will come, our operations lead, who will take us through in another small session before we kick off. Um, Bruno Komuga, if you're there, please uh, speak to us. Uh, thank you so much, Isaac Bakashava. Uh, my name is Bruno Komuga. Uh, I am, um, I'm a co-founder and operations lead for Bakash Media Foundation. Um, I thank you all for joining us as we launch our second season of the Career Essential Series. Uh, I was tasked to, to launch this fundraising campaign titled Bridging the Gap, which is, uh, which is inspired by um, the, the model of work of Bakash Media, which is bridging the gap between practicing professionals in the field with the young people who are pursuing uh, their respective careers. So our dear panelists, uh, partners, colleagues and audience, uh, help Bakash Media Foundation make a difference in the livelihood of young people through growing this community and platform of knowledge are from the most inspired thinkers. Uh, many young people out there in our modern, in our modern uh, society are inadequately inspired and, and equipped to, to realize the, the life they need, especially in their careers and, and businesses. So uh, the funds that we hope to, to solicit from this project or campaign, I will firstly take the team and the projects added by the founder, Cash Media to Life. We happen to be serving the vision of, we happen to be serving the vision of elevating young people and equipping them to realize the, the lives they need to live. So I call upon I call upon all of you to help us raise funds to ensure that we best we provide the best facilities and life experiences to the Bakash media community. Uh, before I welcome the next uh, the next speaker, um, allow me to elaborate more about this fundraising. Uh, it is aimed at creating a platform of knowledge from, it is aimed at supporting us to create a platform of knowledge, just like what we've been doing for the past two years, um, by creating a community of curious souls to engage with ideas and each other. So um, we launched, we've, we are launching this campaign today, but uh, we are happy to announce that uh, on the, first, on the first day, we've been able to raise 300,000 out of the 15 million, which is, uh, which is our initial target. And since uh, the second season is going to run in 50 days, we hope to keep pushing it and spreading the, the word so that it reaches as many potential donors as it can. We've so far had um, two donors for this fundraising campaign. And I call upon um, anyone who can in your different capacities to, to help us raise these funds so that, we can so that we can ensure to provide the best facilities and life experiences to young people. Um, so to, to reach out, to reach out 
uh, is a standard bank account is campaign, which is on your screen as I speak. And I, uh, I think I think more information will be shared in the chat section, along with uh, the mobile money details that are, that are required. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I wish you a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Bruno, uh, the operations lead. Uh, at the moment, we are, uh, okay, for us to bring this together, we partnered with two people. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. I think it would be upon you, the partners. We have Opportunity Tracker and we have uh, Birunji Charity. Birunji Charity is here. So I would like to call upon anyone of you, I mean, between the two of you that is ready to proceed, like to, to say something to us, because we give you this platform, the fact that we partnered with you, Bakash Media has partnered with you. I, I would like you to say something. I don't know if you can see, hear me and see me because my screen is frozen. Let me know in the chat section. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see you. We can Ooh. hear you. Thank you. Um, Birunji Charities, Please yes, say please. something. Uh, Kindly, I would like to request you now to give your remarks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Esther Birunji, and I am the founder of Birunji Charities. I would like to say a big, big thank you to everyone that has um, so far logged in. We are very humbled and privileged um, to be partners for this um, career series. Birunji Charities is an organization that is based on um, uh, reproductive health, social justice, economic empowerment, um, education. We deal mainly with the girl child, but we do have pro uh, projects with the boy child as well. So uh, we're, we're glad to be here. Yeah, that is sort of like a brief introduction I can give about the organization. Well, we're very glad to be here and we are pro women's rights. We are pro everything that uh, empowers women and empowers them to be better. Like we see today's theme is uh, women entrepreneurs as key drivers of economic growth. So we are very humbled to partner with uh, Bakash Media and Opportunity Tracker. And we are looking forward to a fruitful dis uh, discussion today. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Birundi Charities. I'll request Opportunity Tracker to give your remarks. If you're ready, if you can hear me and see me well, I'll request you to give your remarks now. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, moderator. My name is John Akirabo, and I'm, uh, I'm the founder uh, and team lead of Opportunity Tracker. Opportunity Tracker, we are a web-based platform that tracks and shares local and global opportunities, bringing them closer to young people who need them most. Uh, what pulled us to partner with the uh, Cash Media Foundation uh, is that we realize we actually have same goals and uh, it's a privilege for us to be part of this. Uh, as a media partner, uh, spreading the word about uh, the Career Essential Series, because although we bring these opportunities to young people, at the end of the day, we, we, we realize that uh, young people need to be mentored and prepared mentally uh, to take charge of the opportunities that they may come across uh, while inter interacting with our platform. Uh, our website is www.opportunitytracker.org. Uh, we are also opportunity track on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Telegram, Instagram. And uh, if you're a young person and you'd like uh, to get access 
to scholarships, uh, get access to job alerts, get access to grants. You have a startup and you need uh, funds. There are many uh, organizations out there that are willing to fund your project, especially if it's for the social good, if, you, if you're addressing SDGs. And uh, we as opportunity tracker, we track all these opportunities. We go and see the websites that are currently offering grants, offering scholarships, and we bring them to you. So all you have to do is log on to our platform and go into a category that you want. You want a scholarship, go under the scholarships category and see the eligibility criteria, see what is good for you and apply. This is basically what we do. We bridge the gap between opportunities and those who need them. And uh, again, I'm very honored to be here and part of this uh, season two of uh, the Curry Essential Series. And I would like to, I'm looking forward to a good discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Opportunity Tracker. That was really nice. Like, good remarks from you. That because we don't expect this organized conversations that your microphones are going to be muted. So I encourage you in case of any questions, in case of anything, just use the chat. We're going to read them. I can read all the courage to use that. Um, we have three panelists, like I had said. We have Jacqueline Arinda, we have Masena Kareche, we have Barbara Kasekend. And I would like the three to first introduce themselves. Then we'll have uh, like a full discussion. I will either choose to do one by one question as they discuss with us. But this topic is mainly about young uh, women, entrepreneurs, the drive to the economic growth of our nation. So they are going to help us. I know you are waiting for the discussion. I know you have prepared enough to be here. I know the panelists have done their best to teach you, to learn from you, whatever it is. So I am very certain it is going to be an interesting session. Uh, trust me, encourage your friends to join, but use the chat section. We shall read, we shall answer. We shall do all it takes to get to you. So um, I would like to uh, welcome Jacqueline Arinda, uh, Jada Kofi in brackets to say something to us. And then the next person will be Barbara Kaseken and the Third will be Masera Kareche, and then I'll have to go into details of one by one where I'll start with Jacqueline Ayinda. Thank you. Okay, so I would suggest that before she comes in, because she has not really come in to speak, before she comes in, can we do a poll? Can we get to know you? I know you would love it. It is really interesting. So we are going to do a poll now, just before uh, Arinda says something. I'm very sure she's preparing to speak. So can we do this poll now? Like we on your screen yes it When you're done with the poll, you can let me know. Me, I have finished. You 
can let me know in the chat section. So that we proceed. me know in the chat section once you are done and we proceed I'm very sure we have finished. Let me read this chat. Uh, what should I repeat? Let us be con Okay, okay. Okay, uh, I was saying, I see someone in the chat section are say that um, we can have, I think the poll is done. I was talking about the poll. This is to Danny K. I hope I'm answering your question. I think I'm saying what I had said earlier. I was saying, can we have this done, the poll done, then we proceed. Those that are just joining in, thank you. I can see you. Okay, I have been advised that we shall have Jada Coffee, Jacqueline Ainda come last. So I would like to invite Barbara a second to say something to us, introduce yourself. Maybe I can engage you. I can get a few questions yeah, as we proceed and get uh, to Marcella. Then lastly, we shall have Jacqueline. She has requested. Thank you so much. Barbara a second. I welcome you to this session. I hope to learn from you. The people here I learn, I hope to learn from you as well, to interact with you. To, to get more about uh, empowerment, the women entrepreneurs in the job market, we really welcome you to this. Mm. Thank you so much, Mirab. Hi guys, if you can hear me, just you know, do a thingy, you know, if you can hear me, you yes, can hear me can very well, hear. Mirab. I know we've been in and very out. Very keen. Okay. Excellent. So I am not sure how you're going to do this. You want me to just, you've given me Kazindalo, so I just kind of go ahead, I think. Um, maybe just to introduce myself to those that don't know me. By the way, I have to say hi, Marcella. Marcella and I go a long way, all the way from our school days. So it's nice to see familiar faces. Um, guys from the Bakash Foundation, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. It's always a blessing to talk to young people that's what I do every day but I keep telling people that 90% of the time 90% 100% of the time before I even start my day starts like this my I, I call it my mantra every time I wake up I keep saying God if I'm going to start today I need to make sure I empower somebody I need to make sure I learn something new I need to make sure that I teach something new if I have not done any of those three things then my day is not complete I believe that in life, if I am to walk this journey on this universe and I am not leaving my purpose and adding value in everything that I am doing, then my existence is non-existent. So um, today, um, my topic of discussion is really going to be a little bit broader. I know the subject topic was about women and entrepreneurship and how can we, you know, and how can we do that and stand there. But I would like to talk about one thing that is very critical before we even get into the subject topic. And, and please allow me Mira, to talk about this. The one thing that um, we always like to stay away from is something personally I like to call mindset. Mm? We, um, I know they keep saying women have to disrupt the status quo. We have to be different. We have to stand up. We have to, you know, there are so many things around women empowerment that are out there and we have to be careful on how we take that method. Messaging. So if we are saying that, yes, as a woman, I want to go out there and change the world and excellent. But 
how is your mental uh, well-being? And this is, I'm not talking about mental, who are you exactly? And if you're saying you're going to disrupt the status quo, who are you first before you go and start disrupting? <laughs> have you ever disrupted something you have no idea about how to disrupt? So get a case in point, let's use something very simple. The outfit here I'm wearing is of a young lady. Her name is Shreya. When I met Shreya, she was a young mother of two. Okay, Shirea was a young mother of two. She got pregnant with two border border men who could her and she thought the universe is these guys and then she had nothing to do. She was working for a, a young, another young lady, but just to let you know how horrible the world is today, the young lady she was working for was taking 70% of the money and only giving her 30%, yet the designs and the materials were hers. You, if you understand what I'm saying. And, and this girl was not earning anything practically, and yet she has two young babies. When I met her, I told her after she had done some of my, in fact, most 90% of my clothes actually are tailored by her. I told her, this is what you're going to do for me. If you leave this place, I will give you 20, 20 clients to start off. 20 clients to start off. And she took her time, first wait, fear, what? You know, those things that we do. You want to jump and leap, but you do not want to do the work to start the jumping. And she finally took that leap of faith. And as I speak right now, Shreya looks at me and says, Madame Barbara, I think that is enough. I think that is enough. But she has now started her own project. She's now doing her own. She has her own boutique. She has quite a number of clients. And she's also empowering other girls as well in her neighborhood. Going back to what I said before, who are you and what value do you want to give to this universe? Hmm? Yes, we want to talk about empowerment. We want to empower ourselves from a financial perspective and so on and so forth. But if your personal mission is not clear, then that empowerment ain't going to happen. You're not going to change the status quo. You're not, you're not going to run that business and run it successfully. You're not, you know, because already your, your vision is not there. Now, Barbara, from a, from a, uh, maybe just to let you guys know, uh, my, I don't know how much time I have, but um, from a personal, from a personal perspective, uh, Barbara here speaking to you had a very rough start, and I don't know if Marcela even remembers the days in high school were very difficult for me. Hmm? I, uh, I felt I was not misunderstood. I was not understood, rather. I was heavily misunderstood. People did not, they were not getting me. Yeah? And because of that, I tried to commit suicide twice. I tried to end my life because I thought, if these people don't need me, then let me end. I think you see, I was that short-sighted, very, very short-sighted. But I was very lucky that I had mentors and coaches and people that held my hand. I fought with them, by the way, heavily, but they kept telling me how special I was and how many things I had to give to this universe. But a 16 year old could not understand that conversation. For me, it was like rocket science. What do you mean by that? I was special. I was not special in this moment. If you understand what I'm saying. So when I went, I was taken out of my environment. I, I, I call this, I was beaten heavily. So I was taken out of my environment and, and I got a chance to get a full scholarship to go to the States to study. Uh, that's when life happened. That's when I was killed, kicked in the behind. I then realized that the lessons I was having at home, all those lessons that we face, that we think are failures, for every time that you've sat down, and I'm sure some of you are like, when I'm in a moment, every time you feel like you're not feeling yourself, you're, you feel life has beat you down, you can't make it, you can't move on. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the time you move on. Because at that point in time, life is telling you, Mukwan, you need to get up right now, and you need to start, you need to start. If you've reached rock bottom, that means it's your time to start. I was at my rock bottom when I went to the States and life started. And when I said life started, what I had experienced in Uganda in high school was nothing compared to what I faced when I went to the States. I mean, it was just crazy, but in that cavalry, I discovered myself. I found my purpose. And my mission in life, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that young people like you find meaning 
in this world that we are living in, however rotten it is. You know, in the road, eh? like you see when you have cow dung, era you, you find you, you tomatoes growing. In this road, there is always a beacon of hope somewhere and you need to find it. And it is you to find it. No one else is going to see it for you. It is you to find it. So if I found my beacon of hope that has led me to where I am today, where I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm a mentor and I'm a coach for young people and everything I do, by the way, including the jobs I do, even with Standbeak today, 90% of what I do with Standvik is with young people. So even the jobs I find are jobs that are connected to my personal mission. So going back exactly to who you are, everything you do must speak to your personal mission, must speak to your passion, must speak to your purpose, because then things will start making sense. Even if you have a down, you will know how to get out of it because you know where you're going from a personal perspective. So for me, my beginning words as we get into this discussion so that I can let other speakers have a chance to speak is as you're here on a piece of paper, please write down who you think you are. What are those things that make you special? And by the way, please remember when someone says, oh, you're you're getting you. that, that child talks too much. Eh, oh, eh, that, that is a strong point. Please jot it down. All those things that people say about you, hey, she's too much, she's too much. I was beaten, by the way, heavily for talking. And that's what I do for a living. So all those things that people have said, you never have, you tell them, I don't know, I want to build a, I don't know, an investment firm in New York and someone says you can't do it. Please write it down. Anything about you that you've always wanted to do or something about you that people called negative, 99.9% .9 that is your strength. You are not put here to be criticized. You are put here to soar. And those are things that you need to start finding about yourself for you to start this journey on how to become the next best entrepreneur, the next best CEO, the next best, I don't know, Bill Gates, whatever the dream is, the journey starts with you and it starts with your mind. So where are we there? Who are you? Over to you, Mirab. And then we'll take questions and have a chat as we wait for other speakers to get started. Thank you. Hey, Mirab, I think you have to unmute. <laughs> Un unmute here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much, Barbara. Uh, the introduction was on point. I mean, the who are you question is on my mind. I'm going to think about it more. I hope people here think about it as well. Who are you? Uh, so. Barbara, when we were trying to bring you on board, uh, we had had discussions with you from Bakash Media, chatting. We knew you were the person fit for this discussion. You are a woman, you are an entrepreneur, you are outgoing. So I, I have a few things that maybe I'm going to ask you and you're going to tell us how you've made it there, how hard, easy it has been for you how hard easy it was for you. I cannot say it was easy or hard. Uh, you're going to take us through everything like for us to come to a, of a conclusion of, oh, this is what happened. Oh, this is what happened. This is how she came here. This is how, why are we looking for you? There are so many out, people out there that you would have gone to, but for the first question that you, you asked, who are you? So. I'm going to maybe ask you as well. So knowing what you know now, is there anything you would have done differently when you first started out? Is there something that you wish you knew before you started out? Thank you. Uh, ah, hmm. my dear, you gave us very little time. This would be a story for a whole day around a bonfire. <laughs> Not on, not on Zoom, but in a nutshell, let me try and sum it up in, in, in the shortest time possible. First things first, if I was to do something different, I would never have listened to the background noise. Those are people who keep telling you, you can't, you can't, you can't wait, no, 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 the status quo, those things. I wish I had listened more to myself. I would have started my journey a lot earlier. Oh, by the way, it's nice you called us all young and youth. I'm 41 years old. So thank you for putting me in the youth category. <laughs> but that said and done, I, I, I wish I had listened more. Um, in our lives, uh, it's unfortunate. Not everyone will love you. Uh, it, that one, 
please let's understand that not everyone will love you what you need to build is a relationship that will grow you whether they love you or not that's another story you can you know find love in other places but if 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 you need to grow as an individual there are some things if you expect to be loved and adored and uh, life can be unfair sometimes so not everyone will love you but what kind of relationships can you build to make you move to the next level to so ask me how i found how i was i was in the states i was doing my uh, my first degree of which by the way ladies and gentlemen my first degree i'm not using i did computer science because my dad wanted me to do it and that was a condition so i used it and uh, i i'm not using it right now and my second degree was my music and my third degree was my mba and, <laughs> and the study continues but i'm in the states and a teacher approaches me again who are you and having confidence in yourself is very critical. This random guy just approaches me at Elmhurst College in Chicago. At that time, we were like 10 black people in this university. He approaches this Ugandan and says, I want you, I heard you from East Africa. I was like, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and you're from Uganda. I'm like, yeah, at least there's a Muzungu that knows where Uganda is. I was like, excellent. And then, and then he says, I want you to come and help me assist to teach East African history. <laughs> And I'm looking at him, I'm like, e -e -e excuse me. He's like, please come and I, I need, I don't know much, but I think someone from East Africa, it will make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, mind you, history in, in high school, I, I don't even know what marks I got. It was not necessarily a very a favorite subject. But I said, yes, I took, the, I took the leap of faith. At that point in time, I was more open-minded to take the leap of faith. I didn't have a lot of people telling me I couldn't do it. So I said, fine, so I, what will I, you know, it won't, it, it won't be a problem. But what caught me in that class and actually what made me realize that my journey had to start on this trajectory it's on today was a young black girl and she was the only black girl in the class puts up her hand and says with the attitude of like black Americans, yeah? And she says, um, excuse me, Barbs, she actually called me Barbs. Why did you Africans sell us into slavery? This is a 14 or 15 year old girl talking about slavery that happened over 300 years ago. The year is, what year was it? Uh, 1998, 99? And you're asking me about slavery? And I look at uh, this girl and I ask her and tell her, who do you know in your family? who, you know, right now, who's still a slave right now in your family. And she says, that's besides the point. You know, we, we all came here as slaves, but she went to that high school on full scholarship. It wasn't even a free high school. So she was given a chance to go there, but her mindset was still in 300 years ago. Now, when I saw that, I knew that this girl, if she was to make it in the American system with that attitude, she would never reach the level she needed to reach. And that's what clicked and made me change to know that I am supposed to be working with young people. That's when my journey began. Actually, that young lady became my, I, I started mentoring her slowly. She went through Elmhurst. She actually happened to go to Northwestern, another good university. And now she's a doctor at Northwestern Hospital in Chicago. So my point here is, uh, uh, in regards to my journey, is for you to find self, Hmm? Again, when you said, how did you find yourself and why? You need to throw yourself in situations that you never thought you can handle. For anyone, if someone comes and tells you, come, let's do this, and your mind tells you, eh, but I cannot, please go. That means you need to go. If something comes and it says, it's something like, eh, hey, then that is, you're not changing anything, you're in your comfort zone. You need to start doing things out of your comfort zone because that will define, that will help you define who you are and what your journey is. If I had said no to that teacher, I don't think Mirab would be having this conversation here today. I don't think so. So for me, that journey began there. But then I also realized on top of all of that, um, there are some things that make Barbara Barbara, before we even get into the job I do right now, naturally, I'm a creative. I told you I got another degree in my music. I don't use it as much as possible, but you know. But just to let you know that that music that I did music, I also do a lot of sport, sports. I'm not as fit as I used to be, but those were the days when I used to do running and I used to get scholarships and things. There are those things, please. I, so it doesn't matter. Whatever job it is you want to do, the direction you want to go, you need to remember that self-compassion is very critical. And what do I mean by that? You need to do those things that still make you you. In my case, my music is 
my music is everything. I need to be on a stage, even if it means singing at a wedding. I need to be on a stage. For me, that is part of my self-care. I need to be on a stage. I need to be singing. Music is everything. So I used to own a band. I owned a band for quite some time. But every time I was on a low, I, had, I knew I had a space to go, which was my music. Also, my identity is very critical. People do not tell me how to look, act, be. I tell myself first because it's me, it's all about me. Then people buy into my story. Mirab, it took me a long time for me to understand that. People have to buy into my story, not for me to buy into their version of who I am supposed to be. And I need that, I need us to understand very, very, very seriously. So it doesn't mean that because mommy sells milk and that has been the family business, I should sell milk because mommy was selling milk. Uh, if that is not where your journey is, that business will fail in its first year. So what I'm trying to say here, when I left school at that particular point in time, in fact, when I was still in Elmhurst in the States, I started to work on youth projects. That's what I started to do. So I was working on youth projects. I had five jobs and I was going to school full time. I'm working on youth projects. I'm doing all the soup kitchens. I have a full-time band. I have other jobs because, you know, Barbara also needed nice things. So I was doing so many different things at the same time. At that point in time, to get to where I needed to be, I, 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 it, it was my hustle period. I had to hustle a bit. We have to put in the work if we need to move in a different direction. It is not going to come on a silver spoon. And in my case, it didn't. Because my father looked at me and said, but you have reached the States. It is too expensive for me to afford. Please ensure that you take care of yourself. Those were the four jobs I had to do. And that was just crazy. So you had to do the four jobs because you had to eat. You had to, you know, you had to look good, can make up what, you know, things, but, but small things. But I knew in spite of all that, I had to keep things that were still personal to me aka my music, my sports, and I also learned how to make friends the hard way. Oh boy, I learned how to make friends the hard way. And my first experience with friends is, of course, when you're from Africa, in those days, now if you go to the States, it's different. In the 90s, early 2000s, uh, things were different. When you went to Africa, you were like a princess or a prince. <laughs> so you were heavily revered because you, you are like, a, what do they call them? Exotic or whatever it is. You know, they ask you things like, you have a pet lion and you even lie and say yes. You know those. <laughs> so you, you, you get, um, I call it fake what? I call it, um, uh, what do they call it? Fake fame. Huh? When people are idolizing you because you come, you know, they tell you, yeah, you're a princess. Yes. I'm told you that. <laughs> so you're already starting off with a, with a life of lies. But that, that period taught me that until, until I, 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 uh, I was bitten uh, in the face when actually the real king and all those things happened and people realized that I wasn't there and, and all the people started to go away slowly, realizing, ah, this girl is actually, she's not even part of the journey anyway, never mind. But you see, I had so many people around me at that point in time where I felt like I mattered, but it was the wrong crowd. The crowd that we keep is, you know, the crowd that you keep is exactly the definition of who you are, ladies and gentlemen. The people around you is the definition of who you are. So please first go back and look at those friends of yours that you have, because that exactly explains who you are. And in that group, if you're a king or a queen, please run away, because that group is not adding any value to your life. All relationships that we make need to be leading us into that direction. And that is the lesson I learned. So I started making relations. So when someone asks me, do you have a best friend? I'm like, uh, no, but I have friends that matter because a friend from a business perspective might not be a friend in a personal perspective, but they are friends anyway. So I learned to start building relationships that assisted me to reach where I am today. Trust me, Mirab, the life was not very easy either. But when I left this, when I was in the States, the question on everybody's mind was, Abra, why did you leave the States? Well, you would have, you know, stayed there, become like Beyonce. <laughs> it is not as easy as it sounds. I realized that in the States, yes, I had four negatives. I was a woman who was black, who was educated from Africa. Four negatives. In the States, those are four negatives. And in the working environment at that time, I could only reach a certain level as a woman. 
And on top of that, even in the in the organizations like Black American organizations, you are seen as I don't know what it is. The racism between Black Americans and Africans is even worse than the racism between Caucasians and Black people. And I said, but Barbara, you have a something. And that's how I ended up making a decision to come back to Uganda. Mm. Then I ran back after the first month because I come back here. I remember I came back with, with the, I think the hair must have been, I don't even remember what color of my hair. I love color. <laughs> I don't remember what color my hair was at that point in time. And I was heavily judged from the airport. Oh, Mwana, you know, it became, a, I was like, what? The, I, I, after the first month, I first went back. I first bit, went back to the States. I said, what is it? Said, first calm down, first calm down. But uh, um, in that moment, um, actually, I, uh, I, I met somebody. I, I moved to the UK for a bit, abusive relationship. So my life hasn't been very, quite easy. Abusive relationship, but still, I was still trying to find what can I do that can make me different? So when I went through that relationship, I actually had a beautiful son, he's 14 years now. When I went through that relationship, it also made me realize that Barbara, even then, I was still trying to find people that appreciate me, people that can listen to me, people that can love me. I was still in that thing of being loved, being appreciated, being validated. That's the, even the relationship I had started. I didn't work for two years. I didn't work for two years. And then at that point in time, it hit me again. A second time you see i came back knowing i was ready i was ready with my three degrees don't count the first one okay two i don't know you know but at that point in time when the abuse was really bad and i was at rock bottom remember in my first presentation i said when you're at rock bottom that's when you're actually starting that's when you're starting so at rock bottom that is when i actually got on a flight and came back to uganda with nothing but a baby oh. mm? with nothing but a baby i applied okay. kid you not to at least 16 jobs and i was told i was overqualified and i did not have what it took to make it here until someone took a chance on me and that was aig at that time in fact i was headhunted and at 26 27 i became a business development manager and that's because the CEO, the managing director at that time, I remember Mr. Wanjohi Kenyan, we had a discussion and he hired me in five minutes. <laughs> and I started. But by that time, I had gotten through so many experiences that made me be able to sell my story, for someone to listen to my story, not for them to tell me the version that they needed me to be. They listened to my story and believed in me. And that is how my career started and since then uh, oh, yes. it has it has been a point of no return so yeah <laughs> so that has been the journey it's never easy yes <laughs> um i see uh for the good argument to be like a good entrepreneur to be effective they must focus learn strategize and they continue to learn yeah thank you for your remarks and i hope we've learned this from her i hope you you'd not just wake up and you're like i am judged i am this i am that i hope we really learn uh, so at the moment i'm going to call upon another panelist uh masena kaneche uh who also gave us remarks we shall have we shall encourage you to ask questions the participants you can ask questions directly to a person you can ask questions to anyone that can answer if you have a specific panelist that you want to ask it is okay you can just read in the chat session. We shall read them out and we'll, I'm very certain we shall get the answers. We've just gotten beautiful remarks from Barbara and I hope you've learned something. I hope you put this in practice. I hope that we are here. We still have you here, and I'm very sure we'll get questions. People have to ask. Thank you. I welcome you, Marcella.
they are trying no to do something about it. Yeah, it's all right. You can start. With your own? The operations. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Can you see me? Very clear. Okay. So I am very grateful to have made it. I know it was becoming so hard because I was supposed to be on a, on a trip in the field. And I am so grateful to be part of a panel that has my dear Barbara and Jackie. Barbara, Barbara, time. And she's still life and, and it's hard to follow, you know, to follow after her because she's so full of energy and very motivating and really speaks truth from experience. So I'm proud of her, I'm proud to have been her, her, her OG. Uh, back to me. Uh, quite frankly, I, I think that it's, I'm honored to be speaking to people. I, I don't, there's nothing spectacular about me, by the way, nothing special, nothing great. It's just that I had, uh, I, 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 I was able to go to school, you know, normal schools, went through all the things you people go through, adolescence, going to university. I went, I went abroad as well, just like Barbara, and I was so, uh, you know, culture shocked, but I soon realized that we were more superior than, 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 uh, than we thought we are, you know, as Africans. Um, again, they all look at you like you are strange, but I made it. My, my, I went through school quite well and came back and started to work. Now, I am very media shy, but my passion is in communication uh, of all forms, really, to write clearly, to share information with people, to communicate so that people are, are knowledgeable. Uh, before I delve into the work side of it character in the sense that it is very hard to bully me generally as a person i think also because i don't pay so much attention to 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 people's opinions and not because i don't care but because i realize that if you live your life like that your life will be about everybody's opinion and nothing about yours you will not even know who you are so you lose your identity thinking that you must uh, honor like Barbara was saying, what everyone thinks of you, everyone has to have an opinion. And I think it's just the way life is. It's, it's, we're social beings. It's normal for everyone to want to give you an opinion about you. But there has to be a limit, you know. It goes back to what you know, what you like. So if, if you have a passion that is yours and is original to you, you respectfully, you know, uh, go on with, 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 with fulfilling this without having to, uh, you know, fight with those around you. Um, I, I, I know that when you are young, you're very impressionable. So whatever comes there, trends and so on and so forth, everybody's always targeting you. If you notice when we're marketing things, when we're trying to encourage you to go a certain way, this is the age, you know, we look at university students, you're very impressionable. We look at, you know, that just after university, it's easy to sell you anything, politics, uh, business and so on and so forth. But I, uh, I would like that we pay attention to building who you are personally, as a person, what you love, without looking at you know, other people, comparing yourself in the negative. And then when you re realize your passion, you start where you are, start small. Before you know it, it opens doors and then you're impacting other people. Uh, many times we want to start big and uh, you, you fail. You, you, you fall fall down quicker or easier but I know that when you start small I will tell you for example my journey in on social media communication I was a personal a private uh, entrepreneur but I used to be on social media and engage and wonder why negative sentiments are, are always take the day I, I used to and people thought I was fighting for the government if you even thought they worked I worked for the government at the time but I didn't but I realized that we are we're selling ourselves short as a people and the people who are suffering a lot from this bad messaging are the youth, are the young people for whom this country is, by the way, this future, this country is for you people to take over. But if I continue to 
show you that we have no hope and we are hopeless. I, 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 I sense that many of you would want to go away. And yet, whatever is out there, by the way, is a little worse than here. In fact, I think we should concentrate on building here. I, I think that uh, also there has to be some consensus that we need to love our country and build it together. You start at your school, you love your neighbor, you help your neighbor, you encourage your neighbor, you share knowledge. Then after that, you start to grow, you know, neighborhood, village, community, country. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want, I don't want us to, to, to lump the youth in, in a group of people who are not serious. I know that we have the most intelligent population probably of young people, very innovative, very serious. And it's very encouraging. I've seen you work. I've seen you, those who are not a uh, sort of, don't have a skewed uh, mindset. When you put your hand to something or put your head to something, you have done it and done it very, very well. So I, I want us to encourage each other. I'm also like Barbara, I'm a bit over the youth, really. But I want to encourage you as me. I have been young. It's okay to make mistakes, but don't stay there, okay? It's okay to ask questions and ask anyone. It's okay to carve out your journey and have your mentors. It's okay to read. It's okay, by the way, to even want to, to aspire to, to be like people in, you know, outside Uganda. That's fine. But with the aim of building where you are first, okay? Now, I, 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 I know that you, have, you, I, you shared questions, which I kind of you know, put down. I don't know if you want me to answer them now. Merrick, should I answer them? Um, not at the moment, not at the okay. moment. So I, I think... you just want me to give a brief introduction of myself. Yes, and say something, because I, I realize that like, mm. not everyone on this platform, because there's so many people, we have people on Zoom, we have people on Facebook. So I don't really? think everyone mm. has that question. So right. I wanted you to say something, then at a later stage, I'm very sure if in the comment section, in the chat section, I'm going to ask questions either directly to you or to all of you uh yeah so maybe no that's problem. when that's when you answer the questions okay so okay. generally i have um how can i put it i I've, I've lived a life of you know trying to chart out my own path okay but i i have also been open to 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 lessons to learning to you know, to benchmarking, as they call it. I have, um, I also have, uh, when I believe in something, I pursue it and I do it. I usually like to fight in the background and then I see results at the front. That's how I usually like to do it. And I, I want to encourage you people to, to have a positive mindset towards life, towards everything, by the way. You start from the positive, and then also know that failure is part of it, but do not unpack and live there. Okay, if you, if you listen to my, my dear old girl, Barbara's uh, life's journey, in there, she was telling you that many times, you know, she has failed, she hit rock bottom, she moved, but she never, to tell you her story, she didn't die, which is a good thing. So she's here to tell you that you can do it. So failure is very much part of life. But your mindset, a mindset of moving, a mindset of, of, of impact and, you know, community and togetherness and, you know, building, you know, when you, when you have to, for you to have a purpose to even to, to want to, um, to, to, to impact, I think that's where you get gratification. So you might start out as an entrepreneur, for example, you have your little shop there, retail shop in your, in your neighborhood, you decided to do it as a convenience store for the people in your neighborhood, but it's changing lives. You know? You're know, you making it easier for people. Instead of having to look for a huge retail store, they come to your shop. So you're impacting. You're also mm -hmm. employing people. You are you know, probably helping people uh, uh, learn about entrepreneurship. There are people who, who come to your store and they take credits. You know, I usually like to imagine that that, that someone whom, whose hand you hold, you know, even in your journey, even if, even if you have reached your peak of success, someone whose hand you hold would gratify you more than even having 
I don't know, billions in the bank. And then you see the impact, you see how, how you've impacted their lives, you know, going forward. And uh, for the youth, honestly, I believe that you, as much as possible, find a way, get somebody who's, who will hold your hand, don't fear to ask and don't fear to fail. And keep your mind free of hate, of negativity, you know, always try to be curious, find out, um, you know, how you can, you know, maneuver a problem, always respect the law, just try to be a good, a good person at your level, as a citizen, as a neighbor. I always think that we, we, we want to aspire to do so, so big things and you want to be an entrepreneur. That's the advice we want at that level. But how do you operate at home? Are you honest? Are you, you know, are you respectful? Can you keep someone's money? If I it's agree, not yours, can you then also save money? You know? So I, I, I feel that beyond teaching you how to be uh, an entrepreneur and how to aspire and how to fight, you must start to see how you are as an individual. You know, uh, are you faithful with little? You know, so that then we give you, you know, then, then God will give you much or, uh, you know, things like that. So as much as you are aspiring to, to be an entrepreneur and be, you must look at your discipline, your, your, your consciousness. Are you, are, are you able to push a thing? Because part of being an entrepreneur or surviving where you are, you require things more than money you know, and more than support, you have to have that, should I say, policeman of your mind, you yourself as you, you, can you be disciplined? Will you not eat all your profits? You reinvest it. Are you honest? Are you able to pay your taxes and so on and so forth? So I, 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 I feel that people who are mentoring young people, we must look at a, a larger scope and not just tell you how to invest your money and how to be rich and no, you work on yourself, work on your mindset, and then, uh, you know, somehow all these things fall in line. Many of these people uh, who are wealthy, if you listen to their backstory, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of delayed gratification where you put aside your wanting to party and wanting to drink and wanting to spend, and then you know save that money or save that 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 moment of instant gratification, and you keep postponing it until you are able. To to, you know, to be comfortable. So um, from me right. for now, that's it. But I'm happy to be part of this and to answer your questions. All as right. they come Thank in. you, Masena. Um, We're very happy to it. have you here. Um, um, when I was coming here, I expected to hear, do this, do that. But I have learned that these things that are going to come, that are going to drive me to where I want to be in a day, are going to be a process. I'll have the discipline. <laughs> I'll have to know myself. <laughs> I'll not have to keep there. Thank you so much, Master. <laughs> That's very good insight from Marcella. And we cannot wait to ask you questions. We cannot wait for your responses. We really cannot wait. We are here to learn from one another. And good entrepreneurs are always here to TETC. Uh, so next panelist will be Arinda Jacqueline that we are going to have now. And I must say it is an opportunity for us that we are the young generation that is going to call upon you and you create the time for us. Not everyone can do it. You're going to tell someone, they'll be like, oh, I have this today, I have this today, I have this today. But we are very happy that you've listened to us, you've come here to teach us, and we are ready to learn. I think to the people are in on the Zoom and those on Facebook, we are very happy that you are here with us. Uh, Ainda of Jada Coffee, kindly give your remarks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mirab. And like, it's hard to speak after 
uh, Marcela and Barbara, but I don't have uh, a different story from theirs. And everyone should know that the road to success knows no age, knows no color, and the opportunities that are there are the same opportunities you can ride on. So first, I think it's mindset uh, to begin with. Uh, there is uh, a perception and uh, a virus that is eating us, the youth, uh, such as that when, when you see Marcela or Barbara uh, telling you that we have made it, then you start looking at, oh, they made it because they are this. They made it because they are this. They made it because they are this. You start telling their stories. So I need everyone who is watching this first, put aside if and buts, put them aside. The biggest barrier to success is starting. And when you're at war, my uh, grandmother used to tell me that when you're at war, there is no any comfortable position. You are at war. Being successful is just war. You need to put your guns together. You need to put yourself, and especially if you're a woman, <laughs> I know we have our emotions. I know sometimes we feel the society has pressed us to the wall and we can't move anymore, but keep, keep your, your spirits very high because if Marcella has made it, if Jackie has made it, and I've not yet made it by the way, any time I can make it, uh, I can go back to zero. I was uh, actually happy to see Jackie Chandru back on set. For some of you who knew Chan, uh, Jackie Chandru, you remember, you know her story. But she has come out and said, you know what, I can fight this. I can deal with this. So um, I can say, what can I say? That my story is not different. I went to Mbara for my school, Western Uganda. In fact, the entire uh, my school, apart from uh, senior five and six, which I did from Kampala, I went to Bishop Stewart University. It is not Makere. I know most people usually ask me, did you go to Makere? I'm even surprised. I'm like, no, there are other universities. So whether you're from Mokono, whether you're from which university, you can make it. I went to Chibura Girls. I went to every, all those schools that lately are not so galific to to our fellow, they think, oh, that's a traditional school, we won't make it. Maybe if I went to this school, I would have more opportunities. Maybe my application letter will be received. But Barbara has told you, she had everything. She applied over and over and she didn't give up. I have friends that come to me and say, no, 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 I'm tired of applying. That even when you send them a link and you say apply, they say, no, I think those jobs are already taken. What does it cost you to just send in, just submit? Submit, it won't cost you anything. Submit, if they don't, it's okay. If they do and you go through the interview and you don't make it maybe to the third interview call, at least you have made it. So I think, uh, Mera, I don't know what the opening remarks were. Um, I'm sorry, I just joined in a little bit, 15 minutes uh, late. And um, I was on another event, but I had to ensure that I attend this because every opportunity I get to inspire, to motivate the youth, and especially women, young women, I do not risk uh, leaving it out. So thank you so much, Mayor. I look forward to answering any uh, questions, especially the ones that were sent to me or any other question that will be coming in from our dear scientific viewers that are paying their taxes very well, the 12%. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, you welcome Jackie. And thank you so much for giving us the time. Yes, I got to know earlier that you were somewhere, but we are very happy you created the time to be here with us. Um, I'm going to ask the audience from Facebook, from Zoom, to uh, send in their questions. So as the questions come in, maybe I had a few questions that I had gotten, which were really common, like among us, the people. I, I sent this earlier and the questions seemed common. So I had from one question to one particular panelist. So that is what I'm going to use for now. I know questions are going to come in on the chat session. Uh, we can actually give the opportunity to a person who feels they have the they have a question that they cannot fail to ask. So we're going to give them the platform for a minute or two. Uh, but for now, uh, I think one goes to Jackie that has just spoken. Um, 
being a lady in entrepreneurship or the modern job market, how do you deal with challenges that you face in community? You know, most of the, most of the jobs are normally, they say, this, ah, I cannot employ this woman. This job is for a man. This job is for so and so. Women have these issues. So what are some of the challenges you faced as a woman in entrepreneurship? Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Am I talking to people? Am I talking to myself? I can hear you. Okay. I, I just asked a question, but I don't think the chat section would be really effective. I'm going to request that if you have a question, raise your, your hand and we do that. Because honestly, I don't think I'll be here and then checking the chat section and asking a question and waiting for the panelists. We have limited time. So I, I just, I'm suggesting that if you have a question, raise your hand and we get to this. Thank you. Uh, there is Isaac. Isaac. Bakashaba. Okay, Bakashaba Isaac. Okay, I can see. Yes, Emmanuel thanks, Mira. Yes, ask your question. Thank you. Thanks, Mira. Um, yes, I know we may not have all questions because of time. Um, my question goes to Barbara. Um, does Standbeck Bank have opportunities for young innovators? Do does it have like an incubation hub where it, uh, it gives opportunity to startups to be mentored and also to be funded? That's my question. Mm, Isaac, now we get to the, to the serious point on the other side. Okay, yes, we do. We do have the, the, the incubator, <laughs> the Sunbit incubator, actually. Um, so for all those young entrepreneurs, guys who have just joined and you need, you know, some kind of incubating to be taken to the next level, we do have the incubator and they put this out in the newspapers. Every time we have, um, we, we call for, for entries, please, you have to look out for these things. And I, I like what Marcella was saying. You need to also look out for these things as well. You need to do some homework. So when we put this out, then you can apply for that. Now, in regards to the uh, fund for young people for particular projects, we even have funds within the bank. We have funds within the incubator and funds within the bank. But one thing I can talk about the funding, maybe just for a few minutes, is I'm going to call this like a relationship like when a guy is trying to corner a girl, hmm? there is some work that guy has to put in. It is not, oh, oh, I mean, to be a Facebook, maybe things have changed now. People corner themselves differently. But in our days, the boys really had to work hard. The relationship you have to create with the bank for them to be able to trust you and be able to give you whether it is a grant or a loan, it is something that you have to start creating. The funds are there, but there has to be an element of trust. In the financial industry, if there's no element of trust, I cannot loan to you anything if I do not trust you. Because remember, I'm using other people's money to ensure that your project also moves on while I earn an income. But from the side of the incubator, there are grants. And as we know, the grants with UNDP, there are certain things or certain things you must have done. And Marcella also talked a little bit about it. Is the documentation okay? How, you know, are you doing things the proper way? Are you, you know, did you have proof of concept? There are so many things that you'll have to go through. There are not many, they are doable. If you want something, you have to work hard at it. They're doable. So there are certain things that you'd have to go through to ensure. So if you're just, if you're a startup startup and you've just started today, that can be a little bit hard. But if you've been in business for at least a year, then definitely that is a journey that you can start. However, in that year, I would suggest take time to learn, AKA you can come to some of the, uh, you can go through the incubator to get some of that started or even any other organizations. Also under the bank in my department, we also do that. We do mentorships and we tie you to other businesses and other people that can help what you would call a shadowing program. So those are some of the things that we do for anyone who would be interested. All yes. right. I hope that answers Isaac. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You've answered me fully. And I think we automatically qualify under your department to be mentored. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Um, all right, thank you so much, Barbara and Isaac. Isaac, thank you for the question. I hope you've been answered. Uh, gender balance. I'm going to cut off Barbara to ask you a question. Thank you so Naka, much. So Barbara, your hand is up. Okay, thank you, Ben. Thank you so much, Martha. Continue. Well, my question goes to Madame Barbara Kasekende that uh, how can one get an opportunity to have them for a guest speaker? <laughs> no, my namesake, uh, by the way, our names mean beautiful stranger, just so you know, that's what Barbara means. But uh, it's okay, you can always reach out to me and we can, we can have a chat, definitely. I don't mind coming to speak. So I'm going to put my email in the chat or you can sidebar me and I can give you my information. It's very available. Though I get busy, I won't lie, but uh, I'm available when I can, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Barbara to Barbara. Um, I can see a hand up, Emmanuel Luganda. Kindly ask your question. Yes, um, thank you, Merab. Um, my question goes to uh, Mrs. Jackie Alinda of Jada Coffee. Um, coffee being a big export now uh, in our country, uh, I would like to derive into her story, like how did she really make it uh, with that, uh, with Jada Coffee, her journey to, to that business? Because uh, we are looking at, um, sometimes these businesses, uh, there is a mentality in youth that, uh, man, these are for big guys who have got money, you know, but uh, I would like her to really tell her story, her journey with Jada Coffee. Thank you. Question. Uh, welcome, you are welcome. Uh, maybe we could have Jackie to answer your question now before we proceed. Jackie, can you hear me? The rest of you, can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, I don't know if Jackie got your question. Maybe if she comes on board, I'll ask her again to answer your question. Thank you. All right, let me move to the next, next, next question. If Jackie is, okay, I can see Jackie's microphone is on. Are you trying to, okay, okay, I get you. Thank you. I cannot hear you. We can see you, but we cannot hear. Oh, you can't hear me? No? Perfect. All right, thank you. We are just getting used to this new normal. Um, I, 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 I usually get that question and, and Barbara say that Back then, even now, actually, uh, in Zinange, my life of relationships, if you're a man, you must do a lot, especially now, you must do a lot. So even in a business, starting up your own business, you must understand that you're going to do, I usually say that to be an entrepreneur, you must be crazy, you must be a risk taker, and uh, you must first cut off the entire world, especially the negative people that will tell you, I have been in agriculture, I failed, I have been in this. They, they have all reasons. So you must cut off the negative people and then start walking the journey with the people that are, are, are walking the same direction. For example, if you're going to Mbara and someone is going to Jinja, you cannot be on the same bus. So you cannot be on the same bus with the people who are not even planning uh, to be entrepreneurs. There's some people that are, were born to serve in them, they feel they would rather work under someone. Then we have people that are masters. For them, they would rather start their small company, fight with it. They have a long-term vision. 
where they are saying in the next 10 years, in the next 40 years, I must be a CEO, I must be a this, I must own my company. So to begin with is who are you? What, what do you want to be? And how can you get that that you want to be? What is like, just do a SWOT analysis. Before you do anything, it doesn't mean that you should do it on a company. Look at yourself. What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? Basically, what are the opportunities around the business you want to start? I am uh, not a coffee farmer, by the way, but in, I'm in the bracket of a coffee farm because I know my agriculture back in school, I used to get about 60s, 50s, and then I go to literature and I get 70s, 90s. Then I realize I make more friends. I can easily convince anyone to buy anything, but I'm not a farmer. So what did I do? I just stepped on the value chain and said, you know what, I'll buy coffee from farmers. And then I take it all the stages from there. So th that starts with knowing who you are. Me as Jack, yes, I started Jada Coffee, but you might not be a farmer. And I have discussed, uh, I got an opportunity to speak to Marcella and we were talking about opportunities. And we said, uh, yes, agriculture is the backbone of Uganda or Africa, name it. But not everyone is in the, should be forced to join the agriculture sector. Look at who you are. What do you prefer? Are you a good marketeer? Are you a good, um, are you good at, um, at digital? Just look at Marcella. Like she said, she, 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 she had to look for something she's good at and she's interested in. So even you first look for the sector that you feel comfortable with, but also look at the one that you feel comfortable with that can generate some income. You might be good at singing. You like singing, yes, but in the showers, you sound nice, but outside there, it won't make money. You like it, it's passion, but it's not making money. So you have to drop it. I know they will tell you, follow your passion, like I'm telling you, yes. But at a certain point, you need to ask yourself, but will it, because your landlord needs their rent, you want that nice shirt, that some things, basic needs that you need as you. So you need, you need to first find something that can bring in income before you get somewhere i was miss tourism people say oh beauty queens are, are, are just beauty without brains i'm beauty with the brains and every beauty queen you don't know which questions we are asked on that stage i was asked how many bars in uganda do you know what it takes so i need i had to know all the tourist sites in the country i had to know everything so people say oh beauty queens but i'm here People say ladies cannot be entrepreneurs. There are so many other ladies. As they say ladies cannot be in top management. Look at Barbara, look at Marcella, look at all other ladies that have been there. So if we have been there, it means you can be there. And secondly, start small. I started Jada Coffee just as an online business because I was looking at the trends of e-commerce. And I, I, I was like, you know what? Let me take an advantage of this. I didn't have enough capital to set up a restaurant. And I'm sure you have not seen any restaurant of Jada Coffee. It doesn't mean I will not put up one. It means I have known my budget. I know what my budget is. And uh, maybe I'm still working on the... Uh, the other side that Barbara talks about, that you must be ready to this and solve all our problems. I have seen people getting loans and if Barbara can chip in, how many can I chip in with statistics? I might not have them, but I've seen people get loans and they never use it. They say, you see, I have a good proposal and I have a business and I've been doing that. All I need is 40 million. All I need is 10 million. And these banks provide it because maybe you kind of good at defending your proposal and everything. And they give them the money and the business collapses. And the same business, I'll give you an example, go in Chikubo. This business, it can collapse and the neighbor is selling. This one will close and the other one will keep there for years and years. You ever asked yourself that question? So it's not all about money. I know most youth are told I, I am looking for more money. And we have, the, yeah, <laughs> that's my <problem. laughs> Yeah, people are saying, oh, when I get more money, I'll start business. Barbara, tell us, how, how many people have you given loan? You might not say the, the names, but- I am like a doctor. Please, some some things I cannot talk about, but <laughs> no, what I can say, 
what I can say, and by the way, what I did, what I'm doing today, in, it, it, I didn't get so much into my, my career because, but before I did what I, I was in banking, I did core banking for quite some time. And we used to do that. Let me talk about my clients. Before I gave my client a loan, I had to ask them what they were going to use that loan for. I never used to look at the proposal. I didn't need it. I had to ask them. And I, I kid you not, six, percent of those guys were not actually sure if that money was going to do what it was going to do so and in fact for me you know you people you want me to be short and tired anyway <laughs> but for me what i can say is if you're going to get that loan please ensure it's going to do exactly what it is meant to do the last thing you need and those are things we teach when we teach finance financial literacy of which guys if you need financial literacy training we also do that for free if, if if you really need to get that money and i always advise startups if you can avoid it you don't need that loan there is beauty in social capital beauty in social capital and a lot of times people are like no we need monetary capital guys monetary capital is secondary when I spoke about relationships earlier, relationships are very critical. Can I tell you guys that right now I can go to Stratton and spend a night without paying? Relationships. Oh, yeah. Yes, relationships. <laughs> uh-uh, Neda, you're not coming to stay with me. But, but point, my I'm, point I'm being, so for the, for the gentleman that asked about the coffee, the coffee business, have you taken time to visit other coffee farmers, for example, to see what they are doing in their realm? Shingas, the oh, I haven't. Uh, I need to visit what you're doing. Oh, guys, can you hear me? Oh, I got off, got off. Can you hear me, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you're, you can. Sorry, I'm using my phone. My whatever failed, so people keep calling. Let me put this tab. So anyway, in a nutshell, I know we do not have time, but one thing for anyone who's going to start a business and you're looking for other people's challenges i don't now and finish you need to go and do what they call a shadowing program with her it's the only way you will understand that i think like 90, me telling you my story is one thing you coming and walking this journey with me shadowing even if it's just for a month is another so if i were you the gentleman who asked i would call like even like a caption who actually has a farm and said hey, hey, hello sir i just want to come and see what happens in that realm you'll be very surprised. You'll be very surprised what happens. So Jacqueline can have that beautiful business, lovely mind, but that's not the only thing you need. You need to know mm -hmm. what happens on ground. Do you know even where the coffee starts, how the trees grow, the pesticides, the whole nine yards for you to understand the business. Who knows? Maybe your strength is not in growing the seed. Maybe your strength is, is being a middleman to connect the coffee farmer to the international. I don't know. Or maybe your strength is finding grants. There's so many things that someone can do. The coffee business is so vast. Anyway, that's what yeah. I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, good thing, uh, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara has told you that almost 60% they didn't know how to use the money. So that's my point that money cannot solve everything. So when I started Jada Coffee, I knew, I knew that, you know what, let me take my baby steps. And Barbara has told you one thing that I have benefited from. I started with my social capital. If you cannot convince your friend, Barbara, to give you some money and you pay it back as a friend at that level, if you cannot, then what makes you think you can do to the bank? And why is it that people feel that if I give Barbara my money, she won't return it? If I give Jackie my money, she won't return it. But you don't need only just money. You need social capital. Myself, I just walk into people's offices. Why? Because the first thing you need as a person is for people to open doors for you when you knock. How many people do you get to and you knock on their door? If I go to Barbara right now, I've met Barbara here. But if I knock at her office, she will provide a platform to listen to what I'm saying. So the, the social capital that you have is powerful because that's the platform you use. I was talking to influencers. They asked me, how best can I start business? I told them, influencers, you've been to events I've never been. But all you do, you just get on your phone, you're paid to be an influencer, but you are in a room of potential clients or potential employers. But because you, have been, you came in as an influencer, you don't want to interact. Business cards are just 200 or, I don't know, about 50,000. As an influencer, it doesn't stop you crossing from the table of influencers when it's time to network and hand in your, your, your business cards. 
you don't have to own a business. You can put a title, whatever title you need. My name is Jacqueline Arinda, period. I'm an influencer. Have my, these are my contacts. So you are put in a room of Barbara, of Jackie, of Marcel. The question is, what are you going to tell them? You say, I want you to connect me to so-and-so. When you're given, when they open for you a door and they, they say, present yourself, because you're among the lucky ones that they have selected. They say, present yourself. The first thing you say is you need money, but you can't defend it. The second thing is, do you know where the money will come from? You're like, I have the most brilliant idea. They ask you, do you know where the source of paying back this money will come from? You're like, I have my statistics. I know I have been told that in the money in the gold, but you know where the gold comes from? There is actually, there is even money in the Bank of Uganda. There is money in the Stanbic Bank. But does that mean you, you can access it? No, you must defend yourself. So as a young person, as a woman for a business to start, it all starts with you. Look around the social capital you have, knock on those people. Social capital one can be your, your second brain. I usually say I have my second brain. I had people saying I have, they asked me if I have a best friend. I have my second brain somewhere. I have mentors. That sometimes when I go, personal, people say, oh, Madam CEO, you're too much on, on social media. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes I feel like I should be myself, but away from my mentor. So, so because me as, as Jackie, I might be wrong about some things. That's why I interact, not competitors. I talk to people in the coffee sector. I don't own coffee farms, but I have to be on the farm. I have to partner with these coffee farmers because I pick the bean from them. And it's the story I tell. And to pick a bean, I don't just pick any bean. I need to know its quality. I need to know that this farmer will supply me 100 cages per month, even as we have those challenges of consistency. So you might think that, uh, for example, uh, coffee, we have about three seasons, two seasons in a year. So what are you going to do? No one tells you that. No one tells you that in the coffee business, you can have your 50 million in one harvest, and then you have a month because you're waiting to, for the second harvest. So what are you going to do during those months? So if you get your money after your harvest, and you buy a Lamborghini and you buy what no one has told you because you don't want to listen to farmers. Farmers are telling you we have uh, uh, two seasons in a year and this is this and this and this. So what I'm trying to say or uh, zero down to is one, social capital is important and social capital, don't look at it as connections. I have people that ask me, can you connect to me? For example, they might say, can you connect me to Marcelo or Barbara? And I'm embarrassed to connect to them. I say, ah, Barbara, I don't know if I still have a number. Why? Because I know you. I have had the conversations you are talking about because I've tried to, to tell you that don't do this, but you did it and you failed. So I cannot connect you to Barbara because you, you're going to misrepresent me. Then I have people that will say, can you connect me to Barbara? And I share the contact right away because I know they will represent me. So before I recommend you to have a job, I know you're taking my brand there. If I say, oh, Barbara, you know, this is a gentleman is good. Please give them a job. I know that as soon as you step in that company, you're representing Jacqueline Arenda's values and principles. Clearly, you are my ambassador. So if you go wrong, Barbara might not tell me or Marcella. They will say, ha, the Abaja Kiba recommending Ababa, Mputunjereri. You will go there and then you start saying the owner, no, uh, the person who brought me here is my friend's best friend. Then you start threatening you, your fellow employees and then what will I do? So that's some, even you, the way you behave. Some of you use your social media platforms to attack potential employers and you come back on these streets to say, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking at you, how you're behaving on social media because that's the only business card I can rely on. That's your profile. Not the profile you write. I'm looking at your social media, how you respond to people, how you respond to your elders, how you break down, how you understand. I am getting that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Barbara said that I never looked at proposals. The time I said on Twitter that I don't read anyone's profile when I'm going to hire or CV. That's written. That's what you want. I am wearing this makeup because I want you people to look at me like this. But when I'm, when I'm home in my pajamas and my bra is off and everything, you don't see me. 
So I present myself in a way I want you to see me. So I also know that your CV, you're presenting it in a way that you want me to see. So that's why even your social media platforms is the best profile any company can get. There's some people you will never know which companies they work for. They never promote them. So if I'm hiring you for gender coffee, I will know that I'm making a loss. I would rather hire someone who is also going to promote their company, the company they work for. So let me not speak a lot because other speakers are here. Barbara is cheering me up and everyone. I am sure they will they have something to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jackie. I hope the question is answered by the person who asked. And trust me, from the question and the answer, we, both, we all have learned. I'm very certain. We are not here to, to, to pass time, to, to just make our friends happy. I'm very sure whatever number you see here is here to learn and benefit from this. So I have one more hand. I'll accept one more hand. Alice Nyabuzira, mm -hmm. kindly ask your question. Uh, thank you so much. Um, my name is Alice, and my question will go to Marcela. So as a person who is working with the, in the government agency, which programs does the government have for the youth startups? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, Marcela, I hope you had and ready to answer. I did. Um, currently, we still have the Youth Livelihood Program that is under Ministry of Gender and Labor. We have a MIOGA. And uh, as we go on, parish development uh, model. So I, I don't know if you have applied for any of these to Alice or you are asking about where you can go and get support. Can Alice tell me? Yeah, maybe if she can also say what kind of yeah. is, does she need funding? Does she need uh, data? Mark? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I had not yet applied for any. Maybe I wasn't present with them. But yeah. Are you do you have do you have an idea of what you want to do? Right. What yeah, kind of we basically work with sensitization, sensitization of the youth, especially mm -hmm. in elevating unemployment. In elevating yes. unemployment? No, oh, in uh, eradicating, uh, sorry. Ah, okay, alleviating unemployment. Yes. So I think you would be very, you would gain from... Um, parish development model because i think many of our programs are now geared towards actual industry or manufacturing processing uh something that will get you income i am but i have read the parish development model there's an element of of uh, mindset change perhaps you could um, target that but you need to you need to 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 be clear about what you would want. Because if you have an organization that sensitizes the youth, what do you want business from the government? Do you want funding? Do you want, what, what, uh, what are you looking at exactly? Alice? I don't know if Alice's question has been answered. I don't know if you've lost her, I don't know if she's still around. I do not know. I hope she's around and uh, yeah, so she's around. She's around. Yeah, I, I hope if, I don't know if her question has been answered, but I think according to what she has asked, you've answered in line. Yes, I have tried. Yeah. I think well, she can seek more clarity from me later. I'm, I'm available to, to, to give it to her. All right, all right. You can text in the chat mm. session, in that section. Yes, absolutely. Mm. All right, thank you so much.
Uh, I can see a question here uh, saying, uh, do I use Ziplocs for packaging, uh, for packing coffee? And um, if you could allow me and I respond to Nakato Barbara. Yes, I actually uh, use uh, Ziplocs. And unfortunately, our supplier, when COVID hit, I think the Chinese man went back home. So even me, I am sure uh, you have been having the same challenge. However, I decided also to start importing because uh, that is the easiest way. Though there is a supplier that I know, uh, maybe I will just put his number here uh, that usually supplies me just when I, sh I, I fall short of, uh, of uh, packing bags. Uh, but I would recommend you, I would recommend you to start working with the uh, uh, Chinese. Um, I will also share the link, the number, because the packaging bags that are sold in Uganda at 4,500 uh, for one kg is sold at around 320 uh, shillings in China. And when you bring it here, trust me, the government has been so good to us that uh, some of the agricultural products, especially in the value chain, are somehow tax exempted. So Either way, you can support the ones that are here, but I can assure you at 4,500 a bag, someone might not buy your coffee because by the time you put the, uh, the entire cost production, you find your coffee being more expensive. And that brings me to the um, question of why is Ugandan coffee uh, very expensive compared to the ones that, uh, that we import? So I will share the package. Madam CEO, what measures are being out in place to actually make the youth understand that there is money in farming uh, as opposed to the white color jobs that they think are designed for them after graduating? I think this takes us back. You know, I, I don't want us to think that um, some of the reasons why we are unemployed or we are hired or anything is be entirely on us. One is the history that we have. Uh, what you know, the civilization of Africa, they might say it started in Egypt, but when it came to jobs back then, uh, professional jobs were earning more. However, I can tell you also coffee farmers were earning a lot of money back then. So what I can say right now, like I said, you choose the way you want to go. If you want to get money faster, faster, I don't know that route, but I heard that it is also there. You look for it. Uh, make research about it. Uh, but if you want to make money in the agriculture sector, one, there are so many opportunities. For example, we have so many farmers with a lot of produce, but they don't have a market. So you can be a marketeer in the agriculture sector. Secondly, we have problems with branding. We have problems with developing a logo. We have problems with registering. You can be the person running those errands for the, uh, for the farmer. For them, they are so contented uh, with, uh, with, with their work at the farm. Now for you, you can bring on the experience after farm. What does it feel like Kampala? You might know all the markets in Kampala. Walk around Chikubo, go to these markets, ask them. If I brought in my five bags of, uh, of coffee, would you, actually coffee is not sold in these places. Let me say, for example, Matoke or something. Go to these small, small market, ask them. And then connect them to your home farmers. There are those farmers in your village. They don't know Kampala. They are wondering, just like Jack is wondering, how do I penetrate USA market for coffee? I don't know anyone there. And that's why I encourage Ugandans in diaspora and Ugandans up country, please be the link between um, uh, farmers in that place or the producers and consumers. So the, the, there is a big opportunity in there. So whether you are working in an office and people will tell you, uh, motivational speakers or inspirational speakers will tell you that um, you can start on your own. My friend, you need capital, your capital. Before you go to Barbara Sandvik to ask for capital to start, you need your own capital. You, before you give up that job that you have be, because of the arrogance of the human resource, because what you term as arrogance of your manager, of your supervisor, before you walk out, think, think, think out loud that that place, that office you're in, it is not yours. So you're just there to do your work, do your work the way they want it, earn your little money, 
save it and walk out. I was the CEO of, uh, of a television before I walked out and, and, uh, and I had my own company. And everyone asked me, with that top position, why would you leave the CEO job? I didn't leave before I had enough money to make my own business. I, had, I was doing research. And that is called uh, uh, when you go back home after work. I know your heels for ladies. Uh, you feel your legs are tired. You feel everything uh, is on you, especially if you're married at a young age and you have your husband to take care of and everything but if you want to start up your own business or to move away from the white collar job then you need to create time to for your own side gig which you call side gig prepare for it they call it soft landing while you come uh, you're working on your job have a plan for example it is easy to get a salary loan than get a, uh, a loan for your business so if you can get a salary loan that will support your side business as you work this side, that is if you have someone to trust to run your side business, do it. But do not leave your job at once without a plan and say you're going to start afresh. It's very, very, very hard. But either way, uh, since we're talking about women, I encourage uh, uh, young ladies uh, to also... Um, Think about how to balance all these things. You, you are newly married and you have children and you have to maybe upgrade and you have your side business and you have work. I know you won't believe this, but I think making schedules and learning how to uh, be there in time, do everything in time, do not complain, sit down, not uh, write down your tasks for the week or tasks and, and ensure learn the discipline to make it in time your work will be easier and learn to ask for help and join groups that will be supporting you emotionally and uh, mentally you need to be stable to run a business don't let all these things pull you down like i said you can't be going to bar and you work with someone going to ginger if you're newly um, married or you have children you're a, a, a a mother now you need to look for a mother that has made it and ask them how did you make it how did you manage to be a mother to be a wife to be an entrepreneur and at the same time to be employed and start up your own business so look for such people i might not have that knowledge because i'm not yet married or anything but i've seen how uh, my friends do it but i cannot tell you just like the way they do you to reach out to them join groups even boys you have that thing of best friends the ones that you enjoy soccer network. with is it my network you can't hear me i can hear now i, yeah. I can hear uh, the best the best friend and the clicks that you have like barbara said if you're in a click and you think you're the smartest i think you're in a group it's you need to look Hello. for people, all kinds of people, people who are smarter than you. You can't hear me? You can't hear me? I don't me? know if you can hear is that me, Isaac? but network is too messy. Uh, uh, sorry. It's sorry. okay. Bye bye. I'm well, using my the phone. The person that asked the question has gotten an idea, or for more, for the conversation to flow. You really have to use the hashtag Bakash Media Foundation Uganda and let the, the conversation flow. You can ask the question there is the person or via the chat section as Barbara shared her email, you can email her and ask her. But I'm very happy that some of the questions have been answered. People have had what they expected to hear. And at this time, at this moment, I would like to call upon Isaac, the team leader, Bakash Media, to give remarks. Or maybe we could end this now. But I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone that has stayed here with us, our, our panelists that have shared their knowledge with us. All right. Thank you so much, Merab. I don't know, I can't hear you. We are running out of time.
break off and you know, go back to the business. So uh, as Bakashmi Foundation, we are going to be always here every Thursday for these sessions. And for the next session, uh, we have a topic that is already up and we've lined up also panelists that are going to really tackle this topic. And I also hope our previous panelists, okay, our panelists we had today, will come back on Thursday and attend and also listen this time around and don't speak. All right, so our campaign as our operations lead had already talked about it. As you can see on board, that's the topic we are going to have, fostering meaningful, meaningful connections. And I think our panelists talked about this, connections. And that's what Barbara talked about most. So this is going to be our next, uh, our next topic. And we have panelists, we are not going to reveal them now, but uh, I think on Monday, that's when it will be up. So for the campaign, I think our operations lead talked about it. We've raised 300 so far. And yeah, we have 50 days to go. And yeah, if our audience out there is willing to support us and our panelists, please, you can check it out. The accounts are already ready. I think our operations lead will share them with us in the chat. We can keep on the conversation. You can ask for more questions, but now that we are running out of time, we're also having a training, uh, a class mystery that is coming up that is in January, but the details are also going to be shared in the chat. For now, uh, we have to let you go. On behalf of my team and everyone who has been here, please support the cause we are on. Uh, the accounts I think are on board now, yeah. Please do something, get in touch with us. We will be so happy for you to join us on this journey. For the panelists, our partners and the audience, it's been so great having you. And our moderator, thank you so much for initiating this brilliant discussion. We know we've run out of time. We are supposed to end at 12.30, but yeah, the discussion was so warm. So for now, um, I wish you a good afternoon on behalf of my team. <laughs>